Made any progress? It's a little slow going with this inferior equipment. Stop making excuses. Excuses? For all talk's sake, you've given me a box of scraps to work with. Yeah, well, just be glad I didn't stick you in a cave. <sighs> he thinks he's all that, but well, I'd like to see him try and do this. This might do the trick. Hello and welcome to Crow Forest Reviews. We're going to be doing something a little bit different this time. Talk about a comic book. Why a comic book? Well, I just happened to have a copy of a very strange comic from IDW Publishing that really needs to have someone take a closer look at it. So with that in mind, let's take a look at Fiendship is Magic number four. The comic was written as part of IDW's five-week-long Nightmare Night event, wherein each issue would focus on a different villain from the show, or occasionally just made-up villains who seemed cool. Having read all five of the books, I can tell you without any doubt, this is by far the weirdest of them. And that's actually saying quite a bit. Let's take a look at the cover. The cover is certainly very striking featuring a very dark Luna, while still maintaining that she's not quite Nightmare Moon at this point. She's clearly getting very close to that point, but the transition has yet to be completed, at least at the time of the cover. Overall, a very nice, well-done cover that gets the point across. Kudos. So we start off with some exposition about how Celestia banished Luna to the moon. And so it was. Nightmare Moon was banished to the moon until a time when she could be defeated. Wait, doesn't that technically count as a defeat? And for that matter, why is Celestia sending Luna to the moon? Isn't that like imprisoning earthbenders in a dirt prison? Anyway, we start off proper with Luna landing rather roughly on the moon's surface and lamenting her lost freedom but it's not long before she becomes bored with the new status quo and gets right back to her old tricks. She spots a settlement in the distance and goes to investigate, thinking that the natives will be easy victims for her to rule over. But she's taken rather aback when she sees the type of establishment that she's walked into. Yes, little one, let's add some adventure to your dream. You'll be flying with the Wonder Bolts in no time. Let me get this straight. All you fluffykins up here actually make the ponies dreams? Okay, that was an unexpected twist. The leader of the fluffykins shows Nightmare how they make dreams, and she decides that she will take her revenge on Celestia and all the mortal ponies by giving them all nightmares. Since, well, it's kind of her name. It's actually kind of a brilliant setup if you ignore the whole not making any sense thing. So Nightmare sets out to accomplish her plan, even taking on one of the Fluffykins as her personal butt monkey, to show her how the dream machine works. But she immediately regrets her decision when the creature is way too friendly and talkative for her liking. Well, maybe you and I should be friends then. Best friends forever! No, that's the other comic line. Nice attempted title drop, though. Nightmare and Fluffy get to work on calibrating the dream machine, naturally selecting Celestia as the first target. Squee! Pastel rainbow hair! How can you tell? All I see in there is pink! Too much pink energy is dangerous. Yeah, yeah, we all know the drill. So anyway, Nightmare tells Fluffy to give Celestia a nightmare, but Fluffy refuses since it is strictly against the code of conduct at the Dream Factory. Nightmare, however, manages to win him back to her side with a friendship speech. Wait, what? I kind of thought the friendship lessons in these were supposed to be a little bit less... evil. Anyway, 
They can't seem to break into Celestia's mind through her magical barrier, so Nightmare decides to target the mortal ponies instead, instilling the fear of Celestia into them and spreading fear and panic throughout Equestria. Wait a minute, why did Celestia have a mental shield up in the first place? If dreams in this universe come from a factory on the moon, which, when you put it that way, sounds really weird, then what is she worried about? These guys clearly have a work ethic against giving ponies bad dreams, so what happened between her and Luna shouldn't have entered into her dream at all. Did she know that Nightmare was going to be coming into her dream, as Nightmare herself suggested? If that's the case, then why did she send her to the moon, where she could do the most damage? This is a bad idea for so many reasons! I don't know, maybe she just didn't want to be rewarded with a good dream, like Luna in that one episode. That would be kind of messed up. Moving on. With Equestria in chaos, Celestia laments about her poor decision making. I knew you were devious, Nightmare Moon, but I didn't know you would stoop this low heavily implying that she did in fact know about the Dream Factory on the moon and just assumed that Nightmare Moon would not act on this knowledge. I guess she just assumed that Nightmare Moon operated on the honor system or something. Celestia extends her own mental barrier over the entirety of the land of Equestria, temporarily shielding her subjects from the effects of Nightmare's Nightmares. But the strain on her is enormous, and she realizes that she must face Nightmare one-on-one -on -one in the Dream Realm before she receives a mind crush. You are using too much magic, princess. There isn't enough left in you to save them and still protect your own mind. Then I must face Nightmare Moon in the most dangerous realm of all and save Equestria. So now we finally have our climax and... Okay, I officially have no idea what's going on. So I guess Nightmare was transported into Celestia's dream, or possibly they were both transferred into the same neutral dream, or something. It's all a little confusing, but... At least it gives us some nice artwork? So anyway, Celestia wins the fight, I think. It wasn't really stated, but Nightmare reverted to Luna for a panel, so Celestia probably won. Oh wait, that was just a fake out. Now Celestia won. So that was Fiendship is Magic number four. How was it? How the hell should I know? Do I look like I followed any of that? you doing? I feel an odd connection to this painting. I feel almost as if this dragon could have been me in another life. Get back to work! Oh, but I'm already done.